Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement MLP using TensorFlow. So here's my architecture. We have the input layer, hidden layer 1, hidden layer 2. We are getting the logic from the hidden layer 2. Using the softmax, we are getting the prediction, comparing with the real value, minimizing cross entropy using Adam Optimizer, backpropagation for optimizing our architecture. Let me talk about the detail later when we are talking about the TensorFlow graph. Firstly, let's talk about the MNIST data. MNIST data is just the handwritten data which is in the 28 by 28 pixels. So if you print out the train data and test data here, you have the 60k data for the train and the 10k data for the test. And every data are in the 28 by 28 pixels. That means here is the sample. You have the, the zero handwritten digit zero here and uh, you have the, the 28 rows and the 28 columns. Every row have the 28 columns like this. So this is the 28 by 28 pixels data. So this is the MNIST data. Well, firstly, what I'm going to do is to split our train data to the validation data set and the train data set. Basically, we don't have the validation data from the Keras here. So I'm going to just use 10K from the 60K here so xvel is just 10k data and the train data is just now 50k data so i just split uh, the the validation data set from the train data set from here and also the the ns data is grayscale data that means it has white to black color and that the the, the range is from the 0 to 255 so as you can see if we print out one data here then the you will see uh, zeros and some values from the 0 to 255 here. Well, so firstly what we need to do is to reshape the data. So as you can see in this graph here, this, this chart here, your data is in the 28 by 28 pixels. But let's revisit our architecture here. So our architecture, the input layer, is just one array having 784 items in it. It's not the 28 by 28. So first, what we need to do is to reshape this 28 by 28, this rectangle shape, to one array like this by commanding like this. You can use the NumPy, reshaping this one to just one array having the 784 items in it. So if you print out the X train now, as you can see, we just have one array having 784 items in it. You can see the grayscale value from 0 to 20, 255 here. Okay, after you reshape the data, what we need to do is to normalize the data. So currently the value is from 0 to 255, but why don't we just normalize this one? to the range of 0 to 1 in order to optimize your train to be faster, sometimes more accurate. So here we just divide by 255 in order to have the range from 0 to 1 here. After that, we just, we just convert Y value to the one hot encoding here because let's revisit the architecture here. So here the Y value, we have 10 nodes because we have the digit from 0 to 9 and in the deep learning architecture everything is like a node right so we have the 10 nodes here and it should be one hot encoding for example number 0 should be like the, this n0 should be the 1 and the other ends here should be the 0 and if your y value is 9 that means this n9 should be the 1 but the other ends here should be the 0 so we are converting the y value to the one hot encoding from this code so now we already made this input layer and the y values here. So let's talk about the TensorFlow graph now. Well, our first hidden layer, the hidden layer 1 has 256 nodes in it. And the second hidden layer has 128 nodes in it. And we are getting the logic value from the hidden layer 2. So here logic value, we have 10 classes here, N0 to N9. We have 10 classes and we are applying the softmax here in order to get the prediction uh, here and doing the cross entropy between the prediction and the label. 
So let's talk about the X and Y first, input layer and the output layer. Input layer, we are getting the 784 items, so we are saying the 784 here. And we don't know how many samples here, so we just say none here. And the Y value, we have 10 classes because the MNIST data have from 0 to the 9 handwritten digits. And we also don't know the sample data, uh, how many samples we have, so we just say none here. This is just placeholder, so we are going to feed real data at the end of this Jupyter Notable. So let's talk about the MLP uh, hidden layers now. So the first hidden layer, we had 256 nodes in it, which are getting 784 inputs. So getting 784 inputs, and we have the 256 nodes here. Bias, we have the 256 because we need a bias for each node, right? And the output of this hidden layer is just multiply, multiply the x with w value plus the bias value. This is the hidden layer, and we are applying the, the activation function using ReLU. So after we multiply x and w plus b1 bias, then we are doing the ReLU here in order to get the activation output from the hidden layer 1. And the second hidden layer is very similar, but the second hidden layer have 128 nodes in it. So the hidden layer 1's output are 256. So we are getting the 256 as input. And we have the 128 nodes in this hidden layer 2. Where we, we have the bias 2, 128, because we have 128 nodes in the hidden layer 2. And the hidden layer 2's output is going to be the matrix multiplication of the W2 and H1's output plus the bias value. And this value goes to ReLU function as the activation function of the hidden layer 2. Okay, and then output layer, we want to have 10 nodes at the output layer, right? So we are going to just multiply W3 with H2 value plus bias, right? That is the logic. So this logic is here. Okay, this is the MLP function here. After this MLP function, we are getting the logic value, and we want to get the softmax value of this logic. This is here, softmax cross entropy with logic. This is here, softmax prediction. So we are getting the softmax for these 10 nodes here. This is basically our prediction. And then, since we have the loss function here, we want to have the optimizer. In this tutorial, I'm going to use the Adam optimizer with the learning rate 0.01 and going to minimize this loss function. Okay, so let's see how I train this model here. So basically, the TensorFlow graph will need to initialize first in order to use this graph. So we have this init here. I'm going to run this init from here, ses.run init. From here, we are actually running with the real data. So let's talk about the train hyperparameters first. Well, I'm going to uh, have the epoch with 30 here. So we will have the 30 epochs, and the batch size is going to be 1,000 here. And I'm going to iterate, iterate this one uh, 50 times because our batch size is 1,000, uh, and our train data has the 50K. So the iteration is going to be 50. So let's talk about the training here. After we run the session here, we are going to have the, uh, how many epochs we have? Uh, we have the 30 epochs here. So we are going to have the 30 validation scores. And here, I'm going to use the mini batch. So batch size is 1,000, so we are going to iterate 50 times. So one epoch is going to have the 50 optimization in this full loop. And, okay, so here, so here we says that run training with the uh, X-train data using the mini batches here and going to optimize our graph, okay? And then after 50 iteration, I'm going to print out what is the validation score. And then after 30 epochs is done, I'm going to test our model using this function. So we are going to just basically compare our prediction with the real y value, how using this x test and y test. This is the test data, which have the uh, uh, 10k data in it. So let me train and test right away. So kernel restart, run all. 
and you should come in here. Let's see how it's working. Okay, it's coming. So first validation of Crossy was like a 10, right? It's very small, but the second epoch you can see it's like a 78. And so it goes better and better. And you can see the loss is also very high, but as time goes by, the loss is going down. So since we have the 30 epochs, it will go to the 30 epochs here. Looks like the validation of Crossy is now about the 90. Well, until we get to 30 epochs, let's talk about the early stopping here. So we have the 30 epochs here, but we don't know which epoch is the best. How we can know the best epochs here? We can use the epoch like a thousand or a million if you want, but it will take a lot of time or it may have the overfitting, right? Because it's going to be optimized based on the only train data. We don't know which one is the best, even if it's working well, well, it may work on the train data very well, but it may not work on the real data. So by using the early stopping, actually, you can overcome the overfitting. Also, you can have the training much faster than having millions of epochs. So I'm going to talk about the early stopping in the next video. And here with the 30 epochs, you got it. You got the test accuracy like 92 here. So it looks like it went well. Okay, so today's tutorial is how to use TensorFlow to implement MLP using the MNIST data. And the next video, I'm going to talk about the early stopping to overcome the overfitting in the deep learning model. Thank you very much. And always, you can come to my GitHub website, clone it, and practice yourself. Okay, I will see you on the next video.